When we left off in the last video, we showed how this generic amino acid could be converted to this ketone using PLP. However, we hadn't gotten to the point where we were converting alpha ketoglutarate into the amine. So we're going to pick up there. We have PLP in its PMP state as the amine. And we're going to go ahead and call this stage four of our reaction. Here's PMP. In the last video, this amine group was colored purple because it had come from the amino acid, but I'm just going to start with this all in blue so we can keep track of this amine group once again. Here's our molecule of alpha ketoglutarate. I've abbreviated each of these carboxylic acids a little differently. Sorry about that. We could also put CO2 minus down here as well. And we're going to need an acidic enzyme residue in this step because the amine is going to attack the carbonyl and we'll need a proton to protonate that. So PMP was deprotonated in the final step. This is in great position to grab this proton and facilitate the attack. So we're deprotonating here. These electrons can come and attack this carbonyl and we'll protonate using our enzyme residue. If we look back to our overall reaction, we see our carbonyl is converting to an amine. It'll make sense at this point to eliminate water. So we'll use a basic enzyme residue to deprotonate here, allowing nitrogen to form a double bond. And on its way out, the OH will grab a proton from the enzyme. Let's show the arrow pushing to form our amine. And I just noticed I was so focused on my arrow pushing, I need to show PMP at biological pH. So I'm going to go ahead and protonate the nitrogen. So just add the protons to all of these steps. Now our final stage is going to involve lysine coming in and attaching at this carbon atom here, kicking off our amino acid. But with the double bond here right now, we can't do that. So we're going to need to tautomerize to put the double bond over here so that we're able to cleave our group off with our incoming lysine residue. Let's call this stage five, a tautomerization step. A basic enzyme residue will deprotonate here and we'll be able to push electrons through, grabbing a proton onto the carbon of this imine. So we'll protonate here push these electrons to make a new imine. And protonate this double bond. So even though we're drawing this flat on paper, this, this is a three dimensional active site. And so there's a cage around this, if you will, of amino acid residues. And our carefully positioned acidic residue is going to be oriented in such a way that we deliver the proton to make the L amino acid. I've just boxed these to make them easier to see. And let's introduce our stage six, which will be cleavage of our newly formed amino acid by our enzyme bound lysine residue. For ease, we're showing the side chain of lysine, not charged, so we have just an NH2, and we're going to use a basic enzyme residue to remove this proton and facilitate attack. We'll begin our arrow pushing with this basic residue. And we can grab the proton off of PLP to finish our arrow pushing. Darn, I forgot the color coding of my amino acid here. I knew this would happen at some point. I'm going to reintroduce it in this next step. And with the magic of whiteout, we fixed the color coding here. <laughs> and now we just need to push these electrons in from lysine to kick off our newly formed glutamic acid. And we're going to grab a proton on our way out to protonate this nitrogen. So we'll add an acidic enzyme residue over here. Notice I've reoriented PLP, and so this oxygen is poised to grab this proton and facilitate imine formation. So in this final step, we've regenerated PLP in its original enzyme-bound state. So the enzyme is ready to complete another catalytic cycle, transaminating a new amino acid. 
We've also generated glutamic acid. And this can be deaminated, so the amine can be removed. And this will produce ammonia. In some organisms, the ammonia can be directly excreted to the surroundings. However, in some higher organisms, such as humans, ammonia that's released from this will need to be converted to urea, a less toxic substance, and be excreted from the body that way. KP here. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up on the way out. And for more chemistry, subscribe to my channel.